The following is a presentation of Team Bonding, providing more than 100 live, virtual, or hybrid corporate team building activities for companies around the world. Visit teambonding.com to schedule your event now. Hello, team. It's me, Rich Riddensland, once again, welcoming you to Team Building Around the World, the podcast where I speak to people from the team bonding, team building industry from all across the globe. Today is a very special episode for me because we're going more local. I'm actually going to talk to one of my dearest friends, somebody who was actually there at Team Bonding in 2009 when I first signed on and became a member of this lovely organization and this this community. But first, of course, let me take a second and throw some love to my supporters. This show is supported by the Catalyst Team Building Network. Find out more about the world's largest network of team building providers at CatalystGlobal.com. And I also want to thank my friends at B1G1, which can make your business a real force for good. So visit B1G1.com to get started. And today, friends, I'm going to be talking to a woman who, well, she's been a mentor for me back in the early days at Team Bonding. But she's also a dear friend, a fellow actor, and a near award-winning playwright. So please welcome to the show my dear friend, Miss Jane Hanna, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Rich. Thank Very you, Janie. Thank you. Thank you. Jane, the, the applause is coming from a small group of people I keep chained up under my desk. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Bless them. I will feed them snacks. Excellent. I, you and I have known each other for many years, but my audience out there doesn't. So why don't you go ahead and just introduce yourself, tell them a little bit about yourself. Okay. Well, I'm Jane Hanna, and I'm currently Assistant Director of Corporate Events at Team Bonding. Mm. And Team Bonding came into my life when I emigrated to the U.S. in 2002. And I met David Goldstein. And at the time, David and I ran Mystery Cafe and were just beginning Team Bonding. David Goldstein being the COO of Team Bonding. Correct. And he and I have had wonderful adventures and the company <laughs> has developed in so many uh, different areas from theater to uh, scavenger hunts to team building to serious training it's been remarkable the differences and the adventures that we've had together mm. and i've done many different roles uh, from box office for mystery cafe um, mm. production manager director of corporate events and including uh, a time when i went out on the road as a facilitator which was extraordinary for me and a really good insight into uh, production and event management too now, how did you get started in all this, Jane? What made you decide that team building was a venue for you? A million years ago, back in <laughs> England, <laughs> I was an actress. And I went to drama school and I got the equity card and, and mm. I was out on the road trying to act. When stage fright hit me when I was in on tour in a play, and I thought, I, I'm too scared performing, but I love the connection to people mm -hmm. and what happens with an audience. And from that, my writing developed. And from that, um, I was connected to a company that produced children's events across the United Kingdom. And these were public events, large events for education and training for children. Very mm -hmm. cool. And that was the job that I was doing before I emigrated. And then when you immigrated here, what happened? So with that company in England, I was event managing. And I thought as I'm emigrating, I want to continue to do that. Mm -hmm. And I went online looking for creative types of companies. And that's where I found at the time the Mystery Cafe and David. Mm. And I had an interview with him and an interview at another place. And it was David in a basement at the time at his house. <laughs> um, <laughs> And I just fell in love with the company and the ideas, and that was it. I was hooked. Well, what is it about team building, to dig in a little bit deeper, that you fell in love with? I mean, what is it about that type of organization? Great question. So it's interesting how in your life you find yourself in areas and, and you think, I wonder why I'm here. What is it that I love? Mm -hmm. And the truth of me is that I, uh, as, as you know me well, Rich, I think everything that I do is from my heart and my connection and my sense of community with I people. I would agree with that, yes. Yeah, <laughs> and that I care for people. So the thought of team building actually making a difference, which I believe it does, mm. really resonates with me. 
And I love that from a facilitator point of view. I also love it from an event manager point of view. And it's interesting how anything that I've tried in my life has always brought me back to that. And it's a sense of great connection and care. Let's talk, as you've said, you've been through many different areas of the organization. You've, you've held many hats, as they would say. Which is your favorite that you've ever done in the organization? I would say it's whatever I'm doing at the time. <laughs> and now, now that I've done everything, I, I believe I've done everything. David, my- You've done everything but own the company, yeah. I think I have done everything. I think my, my truest place that I love to be is actually in event management. Now, I've loved facilitating, but I really do love the connection that I have with my client contacts, with the facilitators, and making everything come together beautifully. Mm. I do love, there's been facilitating opportunities that I have in training and personal groups, Mm -hmm. and I love that too, because I love seeing the difference that we can make with that. But perhaps the most comfortable place is sitting in my slippers, event managing. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that, there's an and image for everybody to catch hold of. Now, um, through through the years, how trends have changed and and requirements have changed and restrictions, and now yeah. this is a, the most extraordinary time. And there is there is part of me that is so curious to see how do we manage all of this and how do we do it well. And there's part of me that is embracing the opportunity to realign where people need to be in the workplace and need to be together. Mm. And I'm excited about these opportunities that we've created virtually is extraordinary. And I know that live programming will will come back, but we'll be side by side with these virtual connections. And I think what we're doing now is so important to helping and supporting companies go through such such changes. Mm. So I, I'm proud to be here right now. Great. Actually, if we can focus on that just a little bit, what are some of your favorite things that you're promoting right now? Because as we're discussing this, uh, we're a little over three months into phase one of the COVID-19 situation. Yeah. But yeah. now offices are starting to reopen. And in point of fact, you're actually talking to us from the office today. Yeah. Which yeah. is which had been a rarity for a very long time. Well, I think what has been amazing to me mm-hmm. is... I've been loving, we've been doing a lot of game shows and people go, oh, okay, that's just fun. Mm -hmm. You know, just fun should be eliminated from the dictionary because (laughs) what I'm seeing is people connecting through Zoom, through whichever video conference platform they wish to use, and they're seeing one another and they're so delighted to see one another. Right. And then, yes, they have a lot of laughter and fun with the game. But it is, again, it, it, it's seeing them really recognize, wow, we need one another. We want one another. Mm. Remember the times when we were sitting in the office going, oh, my God, I'm closing my door. I am going to avoid <laughs> Janie from accounting walking past my door because mm. she always talks. Now I think everyone wants their doors open and to have this connection and the water bubbler as as boston people call it time to talk and connect and that's what i'm seeing great and i think team building is stepping into bridging that we're making it happen we know that companies will remain working remotely too and here is a way that we can say this is how to keep the connection open and working and now as people are beginning to come back gently we'll be there to support them to give them some advice, to show them how they can do this in a comfortable, confident way. I mean, I think we all as individuals have lost our trust in anything. Our entire lives have tipped upside down. So now it's time to build that back. Let's dig a little deeper. What are you seeing? What kind of things do you mean when you say people are losing their trust? People have, their whole lives have been rocked. We, sure. We, don't know how many people have lost people Mm -hmm. during this time. You and I know someone who lost their father during this time. Indeed. 
and how he described not being able to stand next to his family during the funeral. Right. I cannot imagine that. Right. And then we are saying to these people, come back to work. Mm. And some people are saying, come back to work, but this is going to change. This is going to change. Mm. Everything that we have all known has changed Mm. in our personal lives, in our work lives, everything. Even our pets are looking at us differently. (laughs) True enough. we (laughs) We would be foolish to not take this time to recognize that and have a conversation about it. Well, that's actually part of the reason why I wanted to do the show, um, especially here and now, because I had seen even before, back in the old times, before COVID came into all of our lives, especially here in the States, we were having a lot of that distrust with just societally. Um, yes. Not wanting to make things too political, but um, it, it seemed really hard for people to be able to talk to one another because everybody yeah. is so charged polarly. Do you think that that's one of the most important things about team building right now is to be able to give those people a sense of commonality or to remind them of who they are together? I think that is the most important thing that we can do in our lives, not just team building. Okay. I am a strongly independent person who loves my own space. Mm. And I still want people in my life. <laughs> we we actually do better when we have connections and support. And uh, yes, I think team building is is needed to suggest ideas of how we can do that. And I have had people do certain programs with us and say, I'm going to try that at home, hmm. which I love. It's like watching a baking show and you go, oh, yeah, I'm going to try that. <laughs> to make that cake at home and it may not be the same right but you have a go and i and i love that i love that when i hear that feedback now hold on one second for me if you can jane because i i actually need to uh, pay some bills over here as we say (laughs) and i want to take a break for a moment to tell all my friends out there about the catalyst team building network an association of team building providers With representatives in over 90 countries speaking more than 20 languages, the Catalyst Network is widely regarded as the voice of the team building industry. Network members share resources, best practices, and business opportunities. Catalyst partners are learning from each other and pushing the boundaries of what is possible in team building. Catalyst Network members share a common goal of creating highly relevant, socially responsible, good value experiences for their clients. So for more information, please visit CatalystGlobal.com. The Catalyst Team Building Network, the world's largest network of team building providers. All right, Jane, so you were talking about connections and the need for them right now. A lot of people, when they are told that they're coming into a team building exercise, they're either coming at the end of many days of meetings or they're at the beginning of what could be a long, arduous day of meetings and lunches (laughs) and sitting down and just spending hours listening to people talking. What is it about those silly games that we play that you think actually create (laughs) that connectivity? Um, Yes. uh, When I used to facilitate, I used to say, well, nobody is pleased to see me here. (laughs) I often see the faces of, oh, no, here we go. And she's short and she's British. And oh, no. (laughs) You're Um, British? What? uh, Yeah, I know. It's it's the color eyes that give it away. I know. Um, And I love that change in them. And I think, uh, what is it? Your question is, what is it about the silly games that we do? Right. How do we how you do know, we go is, from we're, we're going to be playing some, some silly games to, hey, you guys learned a lesson. How does that happen? Yeah, yeah. It is that moment when you can forget about work. We all get so serious. We put our work hats on and, and we get very serious and shoulder pads grow and, and nice <laughs> shoes and and we all think we we need to, you know, sound very intelligent. Mm-hmm. And I believe that our icebreakers are just that way of going, no, who are you? I don't want to see the image of you at work. Right. Who are you? Who's the real you? Come and show up. Stand up and show up. Mm. And who doesn't love that opportunity? 
So in truth, for the ones who stand way over in the corners, oh, don't pick on me, don't look at me, <laughs> it's just fear. They're just scared. And then we give them the opportunity, forget all of that, let's just be us. And all of team bonding facilitators do that so well because they show up 100% as them. That's wonderful. We're, you know, Rich, and you know this because mm. you do it. Right. Um it, it's never just a job. We do it because there's a passion and an interest. Yeah. And that is so exciting to be with. So it's like a ripple effect. You get 10 people who go, okay, yeah, I'm in. And then it just moves. And anyone who's done like 300, 400 people with us, mm -hmm. the noise in the <laughs> venues is wonderful. And yesterday we did um, 300 people virtually. Mm. The icebreaker over Zoom was hilarious. And the noise, I wish I could have taken like photographs of different faces. That's what people want. We want some energy and some fun and just that opportunity to say, you know what, you as an individual are important. What do you want to say? Nice. And it is amazing when that person shows up, what you can really get from them so what was the icebreaker you guys did uh, oh my gosh it was so much fun we had one we had the the facilitator kevin in question mm -hmm. had them change their names on zoom to uh what mood they were in and what did they last eat so we had things like happy toast uh awkward <laughs> pop tart was my favorite um uh i was excited ritz crackers and then he he was like playing like the uh, like everybody with blue eyes scream out and we changed it to gallery view so that it nice. could be one person filling the screen and he just rattled these off really quick and fast and screaming and shouting and it was first thing in the morning so it was mm. great it was fabulous <laughs> and everyone's then just laughing and also they're relieved that the facilitator is then not going to go into a long lecture right. and we're going to be told yet again what we're doing wrong and how to do it right. Team building is not about that. David Goldstein, when I was talking to him, he was talking about this, what he called the power of play, which is what he really yep. founded his business model on. What does power of play mean to you? Oh, great question. <laughs> Did I stick when you? When you imagine, like, if you think about a hobby that you love to just play at, right. you don't sit there thinking about it without a smile on your face. Okay. That's the power of play. Um, Rich, you and I have done mysteries together and theater mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. And we've, we've walked into rooms wearing crazy costumes <laughs> and somebody looks miserable. And within minutes, they're laughing. And within the next minutes, they're making you laugh. That's the power of play. Mm. And the power of play is then doing something a little more serious where you're, you're building something and creating something which can be done virtually. Mm. And you've made a connection with another person. And then you've opened up a dialogue that will change a way that you've worked together. That's the power of play. So it's more of a playing helps them drop whatever facade or whatever baggage they happen to be carrying yes. with them at the time. Yeah. Yeah. You open up these conversations where you get the truth, where you can get some action, where mm. you can think about this, this will work better for us. Why don't we talk like this, you know, <laughs> in airplane, the movie, that, that wonderful line. That's funny. She doesn't drink coffee at home. You know that? Yeah. That yeah. Yeah. Thing. Younger people are now going, what's the movie airplane? I know, but, um, it's, it's streaming you know, somewhere, kids. Look it up. Yeah, that's right. That's right. What's streaming mean? rich <laughs> um, it's that why don't we do this at home mm. why don't the things that we do at home why don't we do that at work that's the power of play sure now um jenny if you don't mind i want to switch gears a little bit here and um we do a lot of charitable work we work with a lot of charitable organizations especially for us in the boston area what yeah. are some of the ones you've worked with and what are some of your favorites we started originally one of our first charity events was the charity bike build and we were in connecticut mm -hmm. and we did a huge organization and we did i don't know about 150 bikes it was extraordinary mm. One of my favorite stories about this, 
is that at that we did that bike build, they are donated to the Boys and Girls Club. Mm -hmm. No, sorry, Big Brothers, Big Sisters for this particular one. Okay. Years later, because I am 110, so I can say (laughs) years later, um, I was facilitating an event and somebody said who worked there, I just want to share that I was at a program that received a bike. I was one of the children and it changed my life. Wow. It made me feel worthy. It made me feel valuable. It made me feel seen, which is one of my important things about people being seen. Yeah. That's what I love about the charity work. Fantastic. Uh, what are some of the yeah. what are some of the other ones we do? Yeah, I love the team teddy bear that we do. And we're looking at being able to do that virtually where you are getting the instructions where you are playing, but you at home will mm. have a kit where you can put teddy bears together. Uh, we are looking at our painting program is extremely popular and we're looking at being able to do a charitable version of that. Mm where a charity will receive cards that are being donated overseas to the military. So there's lots of tie-ins that we're doing. And of course, the charity side will probably be changing for what people are allowed to accept. Right. And so we're looking at ways of making something creative and competitive where we can also do financial donations within that. So there's, there's a way of doing that. And that's what we're exploring at the moment. So, so important. Again, it's what we're all about, making connections. Mm -hmm. All of us as healthy human beings have a responsibility to reach out to those who need help. That's great. And that's what our programs do with that. And once again, Janie, I got to step away from you for a minute. Just so I can tell everybody out there about B1G1, which can make your business a real force for good. See, when you're part of B1G1, you bring new purpose, meaning, and relevance to your business by making giving a core of what you do. Unlike conventional giving models, B1G1 helps small and medium-sized businesses achieve more social impact by embedding giving activities in their everyday business operations, thereby creating unique giving stories. Every business transaction can impact lives from as little as just one cent. So please, visit B1G1.com to get started. B1G1. Business for good. Now, Jane, I hope you don't mind. We're going to go a little bit off script here. I want to talk to you because you and I have something else in common, as you mentioned, besides the team building industry. We're both professional actors. We're both playwrights. You, let me see here. Some of your plays include Baking Soda, Beauty Queens, A Conversation on Peace. There's a J and Majorca. And you actually, in 2018, were a finalist for the Emerging Women's Playwright Award for your for your play Stalking. Yeah. Now, for a lot of people out there who may not know, what is teamwork like when it comes to performance? Teamwork when it comes to performance. Mm -hmm. Even a one woman show relies on a lot of people. Okay. The writer, the director, the the box office, the the costume, the stage. There's a whole host of people who stand behind a one woman show. Mm. Imagine Hamilton, huge, <laughs> huge cast. That's teamwork. When you're performing yourself and when you're writing, actually, it takes a lot to be vulnerable and to be open and to share that. Mm. I don't do that alone. I need support. I have a wonderful writers group that I use for for that. And we support one another and share ideas. But it's that idea of of when I submit my work, it's not just my name on there. I know that when it's or (laughs) when it's rejected, I was going to say, I should say if it's rejected, (laughs) not when it's rejected. (laughs) At times it's rejected. It's nice to know they're not rejecting me. (laughs) So teamwork is so important for performance for for just knowing that somebody's got your back and you're together and you sure. you and I do improvisation together and that's mm-hmm. important when you're in a team together to know if your joke goes wrong uh, <laughs> rich will quickly back me up and I can leave the room yes um, <laughs> yeah, that, that that's important and I will make it more wrong somehow that's what <laughs> <laughs> and then there's there's a there's just such a great sense of community with that and fun with that. Mm. Um, but you're never alone in that. And it's funny, 
I'm just saying now, you know, we've got a wonderful program called Team Prov, and that is wonderful for team building, and people might be scared of it. It's not just about improvisation, but it's learning how to communicate together and have fun with that. That's a great thing. How can you perform without a team? Right. So would you say that teamwork is essential in your everyday life, not just your corporate or your artistic one? Um, yes. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Good answer, Jane. I kind of lobbed that softball at you, but yeah. Yes. But explain how. I mean, everything in everything. I'm driving here this morning and I'm, I'm debating an issue and I talk to my dearest friend in London. Mm. That's teamwork. That's support. I walk in the door and I sit at my desk uh, six feet away from my immediate boss, Jenna. Mm. And we discuss yesterday, we had 12 programs. Fantastic. Next week we have 13 and 16 on one day. Fantastic. Mm. But we talk about it. That's support. That's teamwork. Now, when I first started concocting the idea of this podcast and realizing what it was going to be, I asked a lot of people a bunch of questions. One of them I asked them was, what does teamwork mean to you? What do you think of when you think of teamwork? And about like 60% of them all said that teamwork is there's the leadership and there's the followers. There's the people with the ideas and there's the people who get things done. But you and I both know throughout the years, there's so much more involved in that because leaders need to listen to the people who are on the front lines, who are, you know, putting the the doohickeys on the thingamabobs or the people who are doing the sales. There were the people, you know, ideas need to flow upward and all around. But let me ask you, where do you think your strength lies when you're a part of a team? Again, great question, Rich. It's like Um, I do this for a living or something. It is. You're really good at this. You know, David Goldstein used to say, maybe he still says it. <laughs> um, I, I was always the good side of, of, of the company. I was the heart of the company. Mm. And it's interesting because as I've got older, I used to think that was a bit of a weakness. And as I've got older, no, I, I'm 100% me. And as I said earlier, I work from my heart. Mm. That's my strength. Okay. Making, taking care of people. And mm. to me, this may seem too pie in the sky, but to me, teamwork is family. So yes, you need a leader. I need a boss. Mm. But, but that person is listening to my ideas, is inspiring me to generate more ideas. They are inspired from me. So you are together growing and nothing remains the same. And we've just, this whole year proves that. And even before that, and even after this, nothing remains the same. And we need to learn how to adapt and flow and grow and change. You can't do that by yourself. Um, And we do that together. And sometimes our leaders need a break and we step up and vice versa. Nice. Now, let me actually ask you, let's look at the other side of the coin. When should people start to recognize when that's failing? What are some of the things people can look out for? And how do you rebuild after that? The only way to recognize things is to stop work (laughs) (laughs) and look seriously at what is going on. What was your week like? And to do this on a daily, on a, what right. was your week like? Do it on a daily basis. No, do it on a <laughs> weekly basis. <laughs> okay. What worked well? Why did that work well? Mm. What can we use from that? Now we can all list what went wrong, what went wrong. Sure, look at that and right. learn from that and grow from that. And if that keeps repeating, there's where your serious problem is. Okay. Are there, are there yeah. any other options? It, you need structure. You need an organizational flow. You do not need, uh, I talk about family, Mm -hmm. but even in the family, you know, you don't sit around the table and everyone's screaming all at the same time. It's not going to work. Mm. So people need accountability and responsibilities and who speaks to who in trust. Mm -hmm. And, And that flow is needed. You need, even in the smallest of companies, you need that so that people can feel that they're responsible and in charge of something and that they have somewhere to go with ideas, with their issues. And nothing gets resolved by ignoring it. Right, right. (laughs) 
Well said. You need, if you don't talk about something, it is going to keep on happening. <laughs> there you go, friends out there, all my team. Wisdom from Auntie Jane. <laughs> Now, thank you, Jane. As I said, a big part of me wanting to do this was to kind of tackle those theories, those thoughts. And thank you so much for your input and all that. But now let's go ahead and we'll try to lighten things up a little bit. Um, <laughs> give me, you and I have, we worked together for so long and we've done so many events together, both with, with either of us leading at any given time. What are some of the silliest moments you can remember from any event? I love a moment I was leading on my birthday and 350 people sang me happy birthday. <laughs> that was really cool. But you I bringing love... in your own cake was a little bit much. <laughs> no, the assistants <laughs> brought in a cake, which was really sweet. It was the clients who all sang to me and that was wonderful. Lovely. Um, I <laughs> One of the funniest moments was showing up at a place um we were doing a, a charity a team teddy bear and uh it was for 250 people in new jersey mm. and we all arrived and and i'm i'm you know i'm full of uh what do you want your your folks to come away with at the end what's your objective what's the the heart moment and and right. they're saying to me well to have a good time to have fun and i'm like okay and we'll do a mini debrief at the end and the client looked at me and she went you know they're all children, right? And <laughs> it, was, it was a bring bring your child to to work day, and the client hadn't told us that it was only for children. <laughs> no were there. And it was me, some wonderful assistants, and like two hundred children. Oh, that's amazing! At me. And uh, and we had scissors, so it was. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the longest three hours of my life. <laughs> <laughs> and you've never told me that story. How have I missed that story no, before? Gosh, that was a New Jersey story. Oh, yeah. well done. <laughs> uh, well, see, that's the problem. I'm from Jersey and I know it's going to Jersey. That's where you're going to hit your walls. All right. <laughs> Talking about those heart moments, what's the best heart moment you can remember? Uh, actually, David mentioned one very recently. It was mm. like two weeks ago where there was a, we can use breakout rooms in Zoom. And right. um, I just, you know, jumped in to check that they were okay doing the exercise. And they were having a, a wonderful conversation about certain things that were going on in the world at the time. Mm. And it was the first time that they had truly connected and talked. And again, here was my point about you know, he wasn't a head of accounting or head of whatever these these wonderful words we all have, head of IT. These were two human beings having a conversation. Mm. And they were talking about diversity and requirements and changes that were needed. It was wonderful. Cool. That was just two weeks ago, and it meant so much to me. And they were doing Team Prov. So from that from us doing games and connection. And I know these two people made a big change. Mm. I love that. Fantastic. Janie, thank you so much for coming on the show. You've been absolutely wonderful. You know I love talking to you anyway. So the fact that we're both getting paid uh -huh. to talk to each other is pretty nice. Uh, can I tell the Rich story? Oh, Rich, uh, oh dare I? <laughs> go, okay, go Rich on. Is the facilitator who made me cry because we were driving back from Connecticut <laughs> eating snacks in the team bonding van and he said <laughs> wait don't do it i mean the, um, cl clean snacks yeah. clean snacks yeah. in the team bonding van i just want to point that out <laughs> oh of course yeah and um <laughs> and uh and he said let me play you man of la mancha cd and which i'd never heard of before and i love a good musical within 30 minutes i am bawling my eyes out he didn't tell me that everybody dies in it by the end i was racked i was so sad and crying and rich was just laughing i need to point out I, first off i'm not always that cruel but i need to point out halfway through the show jane turns to me hits pause on the music and goes please tell me he doesn't die and i'm like i'm like no would i do that to you no uh, you were never gonna let that go are you <laughs> no and he does die everyone so don't watch hey it spoilers me. jeez Janie. <laughs> <laughs> so fun so much fun thank you jane except now you know how we do energizers how we do these little quick fun games at the beginning well yes i'm gonna stick it to you now by making you do one at the end 
because uh, we're gonna, we're going to put you on the hot seat here with our speed round. And what this is for all my listeners, I'm going to put 60 seconds on the clock, and I'm going to ask Jane a series of questions. They're very simple, innocuous questions. She's going to try to give me the fastest answer she can come up with, the first thing that pops into her mind to answer each question. I have actually gotten to 13 is the highest number I've gotten so far in my podcast career. So, uh, Jane, if whenever you're ready, you'll hear some music and I'll start asking questions. You set to go? I'm ready. Fantastic. What's your name? Jane. Do you have any pets? No. (laughs) If you could describe me to someone who's never met me, what would you say? Handsome. Oh, my goodness, you're hired. (laughs) What's the best thing about yourself? My joy. Which celebrity do you think is lame? Oh, none of them. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Jane. What was your favorite toy growing up? Um, Doll. (laughs) (laughs) Simple. Your favorite movie? Oh, Sleepless in Seattle. Mm. Would you rather be able to fly or turn invisible? Uh, Fly. Name something you remember from kindergarten. Children. (laughs) Which of your shows is your favorite? Stalking. Nice. Ten. Ten correct answers there, Janie. Well done. I love it. Did I get them all correct? Uh, Yes. (laughs) Yes. Especially that one about someone being handsome. (laughs) (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, my team out there, please one more time give a big round of applause for Miss Jane Hanna. My dear, lovely friend, thank you so much for being on the show. It has meant the world to me to have you here. And, of course, for all of you out there, thank you for listening to Team Building Around the World. Because without you, uh, it's just Jane and I talking to each other. But (laughs) if you liked this show, please share it with a friend or a colleague, and we'd be grateful if you could subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you find your favorite podcasts, and leave us that lovely, favorable review. If you don't have a favorable review you want to add, then just shut up about it. Everything will be fine. Now, all past episodes can be found at teambonding.com. But that's it for me, friends. One more time, I have been Rich Rinnensland. This has been Team Building Around the World. And never forget, if you're within the sound of my voice, you're on my team now and I am always on yours. You take care of everyone and I'll see you next time. It's been said that you learn more about a person in an hour of play than in a year of conversation. So why not put your co-workers to play with the help of the team at Team Bonding? Team Bonding was founded over 20 years ago with one simple question. How can employees have a great time while fostering strong, authentic bonds between people who work together? Their catalog of innovative events includes scavenger hunts, Jeopardy, and much more. Each activity, whether live, virtual, or hybrid, maximizes the impact of team building with an accent on fun. Visit teambonding.com to schedule your event now. Team Bonding, when you want seriously fun results.